Welcome to part two of an illustrated introduction to USAID's navigation system with examples from the Seattle area of Puget Sound. Preferred channel. The top color indicates a preferred channel and you need to consult the chart for why one channel is preferred. This is where you have a channel that splits and one side is better than the other side for certain applications. Please note the composite group flashing, the 2 plus 1 light pattern, is only used on preferred channel markers. And so you need to recognize that light pattern. And here we have a preferred channel uh, situation. And if you cover up the bottom, that gives you the preferred channel. And there's the secondary channel. And there we show with both the red and the green, with red being up on the chart. In, in operation, Eagle Harbor, Winslow, going in there, we have a preferred channel. The solid dot indicates that it's a reliable position. The magenta exclamation point indicates that it's a lighted aid. Identifying this on the chart can be a bit confusing because when you look in the text, you see a RG, red-green kind of a thing. But in this case, this light is identified by the composite group flashing, the 2 plus 1, and it's a red. So flashing 2 plus 1 are 6 second, or composite group flashing, which is two flashes, then another flash on a 6 second. If you look in the light list, it says JR on dolphin. JR for junction, and R for the red key color. And there are several different descriptors, so you, this is one that you need to be extra careful about. And there we have the preferred channel and the secondary channel. So again, you need to look on the chart and see why one channel is preferred over the other. So let's go over to West Point, which is west of Magnolia and Discovery Park. We have the West Point Lighthouse, which is an alternating red and white 10 second cycle light. TR means tower. The dot in the center of the tower indicates that it's an accurate position. Now we have the uh, West Point Green Buoy number one. The magenta circle at the base indicates it's a lighted buoy. It's a flashing green, four second cycle. Red right returning from the sea. We want to pass this buoy to your left or port side when southbound. Note. This is the third green buoy number one in a one and a half nautical mile radius. And two of the green buoy number ones have a flashing four second pattern. So you need to know where you're at at all times. Now we have special marks. They're yellow in color, may be lettered, never numbered. Mark special features or areas. Traffic separation VTS, vessel traffic systems anchor areas, military exercise areas like live fire zones, torpedo test areas, cables and pipelines, fishnet areas, test areas such as the north section of Lake Union which has an area where the speed limit in the lake is suspended but you are still responsible for your wake by the way. And here we go. We have Sierra Gulf which is in the VTS or vessel traffic system. And Sierra Gulf marks the center of the VTS lane, sort of like the median in a freeway. And also marks a turning point in the traffic flow. So some traffic will turn into Elliott Bay, and some will continue down to Tacoma. It's a flashing yellow, two and a half second light. Has a Raycon, or radar transponder on it, which returns a dash dot when swept by radar. That helps identify the buoy on a radar screen. There is safe water on all sides of the buoy, but you need to watch for vessel traffic following the VTS lanes. Vessels following the VTS lanes are stand on by statue, by the way. And the precautionary area, because uh, vessels are changing direction, you need to be very, very, very careful. Duwamish Headlight, south part of Elliott Bay. It's a diamond shaped dayboard. It's a non-lateral aid. In other words, it's not like a safe water marker kind of a deal. 
it's sort of like an X marks the spot or you're here. The NR, for instance, means non-lateral red. They can also be used on the Western Rivers to indicate the site the channel is on. Caution in this case, you don't want to go south of the mark. You want to be very careful because there's not very much safe water south of the mark. Cardinal marks. They're safe water based on the direction that you have to pass the aid to navigation on. These are not used in the U.S. They are used in Canada a little bit and used in Europe quite a bit. And based on the top part there, the top conical marks, they have the color patterns. Uh, they may be a spar or a pillar and you have the light flashing pattern. And here we go. It's a red and SE. The conical top marks pointing away from each other indicate that the safe water is on the east side. Three very quick flashes in a five second cycle. Now, if you forget what's going on, if you have the chart, you can take a look at this and see that yes, you truly do want to be on the east side, even if you can't understand exactly what that marker means. So, again, Having a chart helps you keep things in proper context. And here we go with the infamous fictitious nautical chart. We have a red and white Morris A center of the channel, a uh, green four second, red uh, six second, preferred channel marker. There we go with range markers lining up with the center of the channel. Note the channel goes off to the left, which is the preferred channel. And here we go with the stick figures from the same chart. Now going back to the fictitious nautical chart, we're going to turn the lights out. And notice everything is, uh, it gets a little bit confusing at night. And figuring out which light is which, uh, partially in art form anymore. But uh, it, and you have lights in the background and sometimes lights on other boats and so extra extra careful at night please. Remember an aid to navigation by itself does not tell the whole story. A chart is needed to give the proper context to any navigation aid and never use a single point of navigation. And I thank you for your interest in boating safety and your support of boating safety and hope you have a safe time on the water.